Good afternoon, everyone, or potentially late uh, morning for you. This is Tim Sarantonio. I'm with Neon One. I'm excited to dive into today's presentation, Managing and Reconciling Multiple Fundraising Streams. We're going to get into uh, the meat and potatoes of today's presentation. There's a lot of great things that we're going to be doing on this one. Um, but uh, let's go over a few housekeeping logistics before we dive in. Uh, first, in terms of today's webinar, it is currently being recorded right now. Um, and uh, and so when it comes to, uh, you know, catching up or if you have to leave early, this is going to be put on to the Neon One Partner YouTube channel. Um, so we're, we're going to be joined by a certified partner of Neon One that I'll get into from a specific uh, uh kind of introduction but we record these we put these up there is also um, a handout of today's slides and there's actually some really good goodies in there for you so you you should uh, want to download that and check it out we got some really practical things that we're going to be walking through and we will be following up uh, this is something that a lot of people end up having a lot of questions about and uh, me and Greg are really excited to dive into today's presentation um, but uh, if you're actually just first being introduced to Neon One and the larger Neon One ecosystem, a little bit about us before we dive in, not too much. Um, so Neon One is a technology and services company that focuses in on mission-driven organizations. We currently serve more than 35,000 nonprofits that cover education, all different types of causes, foundations, um, and we've helped raise over $11 billion to date. We do this in a wide variety of ways. Um, the one that we're gonna to touch on probably most today is Neon CRM, uh, which is a donor management tool that uh, has a integration with accounting platforms like QuickBooks, which is where we're gonna focus our energy today. But a lot of the concepts that we're gonna unpack here apply to uh, even other types of accounting software. But we do more than that. We have giving events that we power. Uh, we have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising that we're actually gonna to touch on today. We have an arts and ticketing platform. We do web design. And especially important for today is that we realize that we don't do everything. And so we turn to the larger ecosystem of people that we trust when it comes to services, such as CPAs like Greg, uh, for guidance on how to best reconcile with something like QuickBooks. And then also larger technology, uh, because again, we're not QuickBooks, right? We're not uh, an accounting system. So we don't want to want to take the place of that we want to work very tightly with that so so that's kind of the concept of neon one is is that we curate all of this for you to make the most sense for for your organization regardless of your size regardless of your mission that's what neon one is is here to help with so our agenda today is pretty straightforward uh, we're going to do a quick overview of, of who we are uh, when you were waiting for today's presentation you might have saw the faces of me and greg and and our titles but we want to unpack why we're uniquely qualified to talk about today's uh subject and then we're going to talk about the ways that data gets into something like a donor management system or or ideally how you're managing different revenue streams um and 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 thinking about them in a way that's going to reconcile with your finance um one of the fun things that Greg and I did earlier today and over the, the course of the last few weeks was actually just kind of talk out things. We've been working together for years, but we really kind of drilled down into the ways that the development team and the finance team should properly work together. And so we're gonna give you some guidance on how to actually do that as well. Um, and then we wanna answer your questions. We even have a gift for you uh, to kind of help take your, your management of your, your finance reconciliation to the next level as well. Um, if you look in the chat, by the way, uh, I saw somebody mention that they might have audio issues or things of that nature. There is some guidance from GoToWebinar in terms of uh, handling that if, if uh, you, uh, for some reason, are not able to fully hear us. Um, we will be paying attention to the Q&A. We also have some fun polls for you. So let's dive in. Um, so my name is Tim Sarantonio. I'm Director of Strategic Partnerships at Neon One. Um, I actually have been working with nonprofits, either for them or, or alongside them, for over a decade at this point. And uh, 
I've helped raise a lot of money, but one of the most important experiences of my career was working for a Catholic school and reconciling our donor management system with our finance team. And, and, and it wasn't neon, unfortunately. It was a much more expensive system that, that uh, the company said, if you want to reconcile, you got to pay us $5,000 to figure out how to do that. We didn't want to pay that money. Me and the finance team figured it out. So, so getting into the trenches on this type of thing is very important. At the end of the day, Neon One's value proposition, because we also have Neon Pay, is to be able to provide financial end-to-end -end transparency. We're going to get into why that's important for your donor management and overall mission, but I've lived it. Now, Greg uh, has been living this for a long time as well. So, Greg, uh, welcome uh, to our next installment of just kind of unpacking financial transparency for nonprofits. If the crowd doesn't know who you are, Tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, so um, first of all, I want to make sure everybody can hear me. So I'm assuming that they can. Uh, and I, can you see the chat, by the way, Tim, for people? I, 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 can, I can see the chat and the Q&A, so I'll be able to handle that. Cool. So if anybody, if anybody, yeah, just say hello. Make sure you can hear me. Make sure my sound's good. And I, uh, I'm a CPA. Um, and I specialize in nonprofit organizations. I've been in practice for almost 30 years. I um, do audits of around 30 nonprofits uh, across the country. I do around 100 990s a year. And then I support around five or 600 nonprofits uh, across the country throughout the year with consulting and with technical support agreements. My company, it's kind of a separate business, QuickBooks Made Easy, we're all about teaching nonprofits how to use QuickBooks. We have webinars for that. We have live seminars for that. Uh, we also have training products that you can stream online. So if you need to know anything about using QuickBooks, either desktop or QuickBooks online for your nonprofit, um, then I'm kind of the expert in the country. Um, and I'm very excited to work with Neon and I'm very excited to work with Tim because what we're going to focus on here towards uh, about halfway through is specifically how to get Neon to talk to QuickBooks in a way that won't screw your QuickBooks up. All right. <laughs> and so, and because a lot of people have trouble with that. And so, Tim and I identified this was something that really needed to happen. So, for those of you that are here, looks like we have 130 of you here. Um, you guys are very, very lucky because uh, you're going to get the uh, the nuts and bolts of it because Tim and I really work together on this. Um, and so, I think we got good answers for you. Uh, and with that, I'll let Tim go ahead, go for it. And we're going to geek out, folks. We can, we can, we can dive in. Um, and, and so I'm pretty excited about this. Now, first, I actually did Greg working with Greg over the past few years. I I know he loves asking questions in polls. So <laughs> I am going to kick things off in terms of our first poll question of two today, which is basically what types of revenue does your organization uh, manage or want to manage in 2020? So uh, interested in hearing your responses uh, to that poll. Uh, uh, Martha Yasso says, thank you, Greg, by the way. Um, and, and by so, the way, um, Tim, I'm going to interrupt for a second and let you know that occasionally you fade in and out. Okay, so how about sure. now? How about now? Well, I mean, you're fine most of the time. I'll let you know if you fade again. So I didn't know whether something was going on. I'm just letting you know. Oh, thank you. No, let me mm -hmm. know about that. That's good. And, I, and I'm going to stare right at the screen right in front of the screen. So that, that'll be okay. We got some good uh, answers coming in. Uh, I'm going to let this uh, go for about another 15 seconds in terms of the poll itself. Got some good, good data coming in in terms of the types of things that people manage. Um, so let's see. I'm going to keep this open for another four seconds or so. Got over 15, actually over 60% now at this point. So let's go ahead and share uh, the results. Uh, so the questions, the options, it was multiple choice. I typically don't do multiple choice on here, but. Today's multiple choice, uh, what types of revenue does your organization manage? Individual contributions, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, event revenue, government grants, foundation grants, corporate sponsorships. 95% of the, of the uh, folks who answer do some sort of individual contribution. Over 40% do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising through events. Uh, there's 38% in terms of government grants, healthy, healthy. 62% in foundation grants, very, very healthy, and then 47% in corporate sponsorship. So Greg, when you hear that that type of spread, what do you think? 
Well, I mean, the thing that comes to my mind, first of all, is that it looks like almost everybody is hoping to manage, because, you know, the question asks, what do you hope to manage? Uh, and they're looking for a good donor database. They're looking for a, something that's going to manage their individual contributions. And um, the thing that I want to say is that particularly if you have QuickBooks Online, um, it doesn't really do a great job of managing individual contributions, and that's why uh, NEON is a really good choice uh, and why it is that NEON is one of just a couple of CRMs that I actually am excited about and working with. So um, that's the thing that comes to my mind. So some folks are asking about call-in and sound and stuff like that. So I, again, I'm going to point to the chat in terms of audio issues. Uh, we did put the guide from into it there. I'm going to go ahead and grab that too, uh, in terms of that, in terms of troubleshooting audio. Um, that is something that uh, I'll grab over. Yeah, because you were quick. you were you were fading out again. Um, just like when you said I'm going to stare at the screen, you started fading out again, yeah. which is weird. But can that I ask weird. you guys who it doesn't sound? Who is fading? Is it me, him, or both of us? I just want to know. I don't yeah, like a, um, waiting. I don't like going through a webinar when people have trouble hearing. What are they just saying? Me. Just me. Okay. Okay. All right. All I'll right. try. I'll try to. I'll try to address that. Not sure All what's right. going on, but this headset's typically pretty good. Okay. So, all right. Now it comes to one of the things when it comes to managing our our overall uh, fundraising revenue is is it's important to address the fact that there's a big difference between a donor management system and an accounting system. Um, so, okay. Am I still fading, Greg? No, you're good now. Okay, there we go. So uh, apologies, folks, not sure what's going on. Should be typically good. So the fundraising process, there's a big difference between your, your, your donor management system and your accounting platform. And the best practices that we're covering here, because somebody actually even brought up, like, I don't like QuickBooks, right? And, <laughs> and so, so I think that's perfectly fine. Um, I think a lot of the things that we're going to talk about in terms of you should be, no matter what your accounting system and your donor management system, thinking about how these things reconcile across each other. And there's a big reason for this because it's costing you money. First of all, 86% of nonprofit staff say they do extra work outside their actual job description. And a lot of this is doing double entry back and forth between those two systems. The average organization is utilizing three to five databases just for the fundraising side. Quick, uh, constant contact, your donor management system, your online donation system, and many of this stuff does not even tightly address the finance side. So, hey, uh, Tim, I hate to interrupt, but I'm still looking at the poll. I don't know if everybody else is, but if you're sharing other screens, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I'm going to hide it now because I'm there going go. over that too. There we go. Okay, good. All right. Tight ship we run here, folks. Tight ship. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, okay. Um, so, all right. So, we're we're going to be recording this. This should be fine in terms of some of this. So, so then it's important when it comes to financial trust for organizations, too, because 25, according to a recent study by Barclays, 25% of high net worth individuals are citing lack of faith in how nonprofits run their finances as a reason why they're not giving anymore. And so if you can demonstrate, not only internally, but to your donors, the utmost efficiency, I mean, even putting in your annual report, we've implemented processes to streamline our, our backend management of your donations, people perk up, people get excited about that. And so, especially people who are giving you lots of money and the vast majority of, of data shows that, that high net worth individuals, a thousand dollars or more, that's what's carrying the vast majority of the donations out there. So what we wanna do is unpack the different ways that you're getting revenue and how do you ultimately reconcile that. Now, in terms of gift entry process, it's good to identify how you're currently entering gifts. Does the check go to finance first and then to development team or vice versa? The ideal flow is that development receives the check first or the money first because you want to steward the donor. You want to get it to finance quickly, but ultimately you want, you want to get that thank you note to that person as quickly as possible. 
Um, and I'm going to I'm going to add one more thing. Yeah, please do. What, whatever you choose. And I agree. I agree with Tim based on the fact that the way that um, connecting works is uh, the CRM in this case, Neon goes directly into QuickBooks. Based on that, it's best to start with the uh, development side, the, fi the not the finance side. But whatever method you choose, it should be for everything. We don't want sometimes it starts in development and sometimes it starts in finance. That's going to be the worst. Um, mm -hmm. But having said that, go for it. Awesome. And so, and, and and this kind of this even engages when it comes to, to to grants and things like that. Sometimes it might get sent to the finance office, but it's important for the flow that the development team, from a data entry standpoint, it should be getting entered into your donor management system. And and a lot of times, people are, uh, the finance team is going to receive the gifts in a batch. You know, when I worked at my job, I would enter everything into the into the donation system. You know, have a stack of checks, look at the credit card statements that have been, you know, run that day. You know, maybe we got a donor advised fund or something like that. And then I would physically walk that on over to the finance department after making photocopies of the checks as well. And so these are things that you want to be able to reconcile it. And a good best practice is the, the gift entry process, at least from the data, starts with the development department. Anything else to add there, Greg? Yeah, just I would say it's a really great point you're making. And in my mind, I'm thinking there's people out there that are going, dude, I want to get this check into my bank. So I don't have time to wait for the development person who's part time and a volunteer to get this in. So I'm cool with that. Make a copy of the of the check or whatever the document is. Give it to the development team. Go make your deposit. But just wait to enter it into your financial system. Let it let it flow through Neon or whatever your CRM is and sync into QuickBooks. Don't enter it in manually. Yeah, because the even for small shops, and I did this, I had an all-volunteer nonprofit. We didn't even have staff. And this is the same process that we instituted. It saves an amazing amount of time as opposed to doing double entry. Because exactly. especially if you're doing manual double entry, you're going to screw something up at some point. That is the reality. And so right. when you do a sync process, it removes that because it's it, so there's also been studies that show that for every bad entry that you make just on the donor management side, it's going to cost your organization at least $100. And so this is going to cost you money if you start to manually rely on things and, and it doesn't matter what size organization you are this is a vital vital approach so let's think about the donations journey in terms of all the different ways that revenue can come to your organization now for today's walkthrough we're going to cover a few key distinct things because somebody even asked well are you only covering in individual contributions no so and actually, Nonprofit Quarterly even came out with a really interesting graphic on all the different ways that the nonprofit economy works. And the reality is that individual contributions are, are a big, big part, but government grants, foundation grants, uh, revenue from, from like tuition or program fees, these are all things that make up the reality of an organization's like like heartbeat financially. So we wanna cover a few. We're not gonna cover everything, but we're gonna cover the basic appeals, uh, something like a peer-to-peer -peer of the fundraising event, um, and then grants. So we'll dive into the specifics very shortly when it comes to reconciling against something like QuickBooks, but let's even think about the sample data journey flow of how things get into something like a donor management system. So what you'd be able to do is uh, be able to kind of dive in and we, we got some great questions in terms of best practices coming in. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely have time for questions a little bit later, but you might have where there's a flow where you have your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising coming in from an external platform like Rallybound, right? Some systems have peer-to-peer -peer built in, including Neon Serum has a very light tool, but especially when you take need to take things to the next level and have kind of complicated team structures and stuff like that, a peer-to-peer -peer platform like Rallybound is going to be great, but you want to have that data sync into your database of record for registrations and donations. You might be doing direct mail. A lot of money still comes in through checks, right? So being able to get your spring appeal, the flowers are blooming, you know, you want the, the, 
people to be happy when when they get your appeal in the mail you're using beautiful imagery they write you a check enter it into your donor management system and then you might get a grant you've applied to the local foundation or maybe it's a big government grant for the state or something like that you get that in it should be tracked in your donor management system in your crm system and then ultimately these types of things reconcile against quickbooks now neon has one of the deepest integrations with quickbooks as well as other accounting systems out there by the way we take this very very seriously because of the manual sync issue that people have um, and then ultimately this type of thing needs to be reconciled against the bank because that's where the money is. <laughs> so QuickBooks has a lot of sophisticated ways that they can do that, that Greg can talk about as well too, probably a lot better than me. Um, but ultimately notice all roads try. And, and I think this is one thing that we should point out and Greg and I are always going to say this is that there's a difference between a best practice and 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 how you might think things go. We're just gonna talk about what we know works best for the vast majority of organizations out there, but there's a lot of flexibility that we want to take into account too. So, so you might say, I don't want to do it that way. That's perfectly fine. But uh, there's a lot of kind of guidance that people like Greg follow, even when it comes to the accounting standards uh, out there that are being kind of dictated well beyond just our industry. So, so a lot of this informs that. So allocation tracking, a lot of systems use these types of terms. You might, your donor management system might use things differently, um, yeah, but campaign and fund, I've used a lot of different systems, Razor's Edge, Donor Perfect, et cetera, um, you know, Salesforce, and, and they all kind of ultimately talk about something like a campaign. Um, a lot of them use the term fund. Uh, purpose is kind of an, a, a designation field um, you might also see appeals or packages, depending on your system. But we, we're using these three as an example for when you're thinking about kind of how to implement a, a connection and flow between your donation system and your finance system, that there's different stakeholders who care more about, about certain things. The campaign is more often than not what the fundraising development marketing team truly cares about, right? You might have a thousand different campaigns in your system and that's all well and good, but basically, um, especially when thinking about QuickBooks and we're gonna dive into this in explicit detail later on, this is good to map over to something like a service item. And Greg and I are again gonna dive into the, the details very shortly, um, but a lot of times campaigns, when you hear that term, marketing might be using it development's going to be using it um you might hear it in other departments but these are the main stakeholders and you can have a lot of them but ultimately you want to you want to make sure that they sync up very tightly with a specific section in your accounting system all right but, can i just i'm just going to yeah. interrupt i'm just yeah, going to interrupt just for one please second because make sure that i that everybody understands because this is actually a really important slide what we're going to be showing in a little bit is we're going to be talking about you know, we have this fancy thing, hey, we need to make these, we need to make Neon send stuff over to QuickBooks, we need it to sync, you know, that kind of a thing. Well, what that literally means is that you actually, there's individual fields in your CRM, in this case, Neon, um, that need to sync to individual fields in the transaction windows in QuickBooks. So that when the, when the donation or the grant comes over from Neon into QuickBooks, QuickBooks can fill the fields out based on how you fill things out in Neon. So what this screen is doing is it's saying, these are three fields, campaign, fund, and purpose. These are three fields. Campaign and fund are almost, are, are, I think you find them in almost all CRMs, um, yep. but they certainly are in Neon. And what we're telling you here is what those fields typically track, and we're gonna show you in a second where to map them in QuickBooks. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Go for it. All right. And and fund fund is a great one for kind of overall like designations for like programs. Like this is relating to administration or this is relating to education. Um, and and fund really really tightly fits into the class tracking when it comes to a system like QuickBooks. Other systems, you know, might call it uh, you know uh, accounting activity or something like that. But ultimately, it's like grouping it across different geographic locations or something something along those lines and what's pretty nifty 
especially about Neon CRM, is that the fun can be auto assigned during gift entry or when something's coming in online. So this really automates a lot of the things that you don't have to worry about. And then, and then ultimately, there's other systems where uh, other fields that the finance team, the development team really, really, truly care about. We're going to get into how do you kind of walk through field discussions between different departments. But I put purpose in here because, you know, especially after Greg and I talked for, for a while now, ultimately, like, you kind of don't need to care about that one when it comes to reconciling. That's just something that can be very useful for segmentation or reporting back to donors. Um, there's other fields like source. Um, that that can tell you that it came in from Facebook or or all these different areas, and that's all well and good, but finance doesn't care. <laughs> and so uh, this is very very good for when you're you're doing reporting back or segmentation on your donors, but finance might act might not actually worry too much about it if at all. So I got another poll question that I'll make sure that I hide once I'm done with it, which is getting into uh, the syncing itself because that's what we're gonna to start to shift. So I'm gonna launch this poll. Uh, I ask a few different things because I know that some people are not using Neons, uh, some people are not using QuickBooks, so I wanted to make sure that that we address it. Uh, so the polling question is, you know, do you sync data from your donor management system to your accounting system currently? So we're gonna leave this open for a tiny bit, um, but ultimately so far uh, we have uh, let's see, somebody is using another donor management system and syncing over to QuickBooks. We have people who are syncing over to Neon CRM and uh, using the certified sync. Um, most people are not syncing anything, Greg, actually. Right. And what I would say, most of the reason why that is, is because they're, they don't know that it, that it can happen or they don't know how to do it or they're afraid um, because they don't really trust those people over in the that are handling the donor database or the development people if you're a finance person and so you don't want that information at all but if yeah. if you're not syncing you're double working and 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 i'm telling you maybe not in 2020 but within the next five years this is where the industry is going um, the idea is to work smarter and work less. It's crazy to be entering revenue in two different software packages. You should be able, and she should be entering them in one, and they should sync right over to the other one. Yeah, and even somebody said, you know, I'm trying to sync it from Neon CRM to, to QuickBooks, for instance, but but they're having some struggles with it, and that's why we put on this webinar because right. we want to kind of dive into the best practices that that we think are going to be really extraordinary. So. We're gonna have a lot of time to kind of swim in that. So what I wanna do is take a breath and talk about how to work with your finance team. Because you know, I have a feeling that the majority of you might be in the development department. If you're on you know, either having both hats, great, then this is gonna be something that you can use to think about two sides of your brain. Um, and then if you're in a larger organization, how do you work with your finance team? And if you're on the finance side too, which is why I have Greg on the call to make sure we have both sides represented well, um, then you'll find this uh, useful for, for talking with those wacky development folks that keep talking about all these goofy things that have nothing to do with your day-to-day -day life, right? So it's really important to say, hey, you know what? We're all doing really hard work together. Let's come together. And so a lot of it comes down to strategic planning. I think it, one of the most important conversations that your organization can have is getting development and finance to work together well um, and, and have just good communication. And, and so where to begin with that? So first, choose primary contacts for each department who communicate regularly. So basically the data admins, the people who are living the reality of both are really, really well, uh, are really good starts. So that's that's where I would start in that. But But, you know, have a monthly call. Uh, or, or meeting together, you know, sit down for coffee with everybody. These are things that that should be, you know, happening on a regular basis, um, especially when you're doing into going into the reconciliation on a monthly basis. If 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 you're doing it only monthly, um, establish a mapping and reconciliation process together. Notice that is bolded. Do not just hand down without input. The policy. <laughs> if you have not gotten input from both sides, then that is not a good policy and process. So talk about what things connect, 
what things reconcile. And, and one of the most useful things, and we actually have a, a small template example that we're gonna show next, is make a definitions document that has the language of each department defined. And I think if, if you walk out of this, and even if you're a small shop and you, you don't have multiple departments or anything like that, still do this. At the very minimum, do this. Because as you grow, then your team will be on the same page and you've been reconciling for a very long time and making sure that everything's on the same page. So what do we mean by a definitions document? This, you have your term that confuses either department if somebody's in conversation and says it. The best example is account. I always use account as my example because Greg, to you, what is an account? Yeah, this is going to be one of the accounts in your chart of accounts on your financial statements to me. It might be an income account, an expense account. It might even be a bank account. That's mm -hmm. what it means to an accounting person like me. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I hear account and and pre-talking pre to Greg, pre-talking to um, all of that, a development person hears account and they think, oh, that's a donor in my database because every single donor management system out there calls them accounts, basically, or constituents or something like that, but it's a constituent account, right? And so if somebody's saying, oh, well, I brought my account over, a finance person is gonna be like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, <laughs> so, so that's a very good one, but there's other terms like batch, right? Oh, I'm gonna enter a batch of gifts today. But Greg, when, when you hear that, what does that mean? Well, the batch, uh, it really, for an accounting person like me, and I'm, I'm trying to read what you're saying here, but when I think of a batch, this has to do with transactions that were, that hit the bank account at the same moment, usually credit cards. So like maybe seven or eight donations came in, uh, but they all were through Visa or through my merchant service. And when I look at my bank statement, they were batch deposited. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's very different than when they were entered as a batch, which is, I guess, exactly. what the development team thinks. Exactly. Now, for me, I under the, the batch processing because of Neon Pay, we, we completely understand that from the credit card reconciliation. But a development person who might not be, you know, even messing with the, the credit card back end, they're going to look at this and go, well, I enter a batch of gifts. It's like literally like they're using it as a verb <laughs> as opposed right. to like a thing, right? So so right, that's another. Right. And see, this is why a, a development and finance definitions you know, document is vital for your organization. And then even dates of entry, um, you know, development team might be getting the gifts on one day. And then when you're looking at the date, it's like the day that they entered it. It's not the day that finance reconciled it or put it right. into the bank account. And so just getting on the same page about these things is extraordinarily useful for your organization. I've been wanting to put that like slide together for a long time, Greg. Yeah, <laughs> I can see why it's fun. So, okay, now let's dive into the nuts and bolts. Let's get let's get to it, all right? And I wanna double check and see if there's any, um, any primary questions that we have missed um, in terms of what we can't get to. Gwen, love the running commentary, by the way. Thank you. Um, okay. What is that? Is that like me and you talking to each other? She is. She's just, she's like loving what we're talking about. So uh, oh, okay. she, I'll give you one example. She said, no way am I trusting a development person right now, hopefully later <laughs> this year. So, <laughs> oh, so believe me, I'm, I feel you. I do. I do. And and Gwen, they probably might say the same to you in terms of the finance <laughs> side. So that that's what we're trying to help you walk through. We're trying to help you walk through. So, okay. Um, and, and somebody had a good question on ACH and all these types of things. So what I want to do is kind of dive into the logistics of it and 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 how does this work in QuickBooks and Neon CRM because the vast major, majority of people are not even thinking about a sync. So let me let us show you what an ideal situation looks like. So hopefully I think I at this at at this moment I think yes. is when I need to go into QuickBooks because I want to teach them a couple of things before. You want to go into QuickBooks first? Absolutely, I let's do, do it. 
I do. So what I'm going to do, guys, is um, I'm going to uh, talk. He's got the screen. So yep. I want to I want to explain something to you. I'm going to do this real quick and dirty because a lot of people, even though they know QuickBooks or maybe they don't know QuickBooks, they don't really know a lot about nonprofit accounting or how things need to look. So I'm going to start with the end. So can you run um, a, go to reports on the left? And we're going to do our, to, our statement of activity report. Yeah, but by class. Oh, by class. Oh, see, yeah, I jumped it. ahead. I jumped That's ahead. That's okay. That's okay. You can run it by class. There you go. And there should have different columns. Okay. So what I want to show you, um, and I know that there's not a lot of data in here, but um, when it comes to a nonprofit, nonprofits have to report their transactions in two ways. First, first, they have to know the natural category like advertising and marketing, office supplies down there towards the bottom. But then also we need to know whether the expense is for a program, admin, or fundraising. And if it is for a program, we want to know which program it's for. This is what we have to use in order to do a 990 tax return as well as an audit. So the first thing that you need to understand is that every transaction that hits the P&L in QuickBooks needs to be pointed to an account, either a revenue or an expense account, and it has to be pointed to either program admin or fundraising. And that's what those columns are up top. Those are classes in QuickBooks. So the first thing you need to understand is if you are going to use QuickBooks properly, regardless of whether you're going to let Neon sync to it, you need to set up your classes first. So take your, uh, uh, go up to the gear at the top um, on the right, and then just go to uh, all lists and then go to class list. All right, so as you can see, what we've done here, and this is what everyone on this call needs to have done at some point, but um, you want to have a, um, an, a, a class for each one of your programs. We have one for an annual conference, we have one for education, we have one for capital campaign, then we have one for admin and one for fundraising. And then, of course, you want to create your income and your expense accounts. Um, so, and then go ahead and forget about going to the chart of accounts list. Just go to a, um, a uh, go to the plus sign up at the top on the left and click on a check window. I want to show you something just to check. So when you enter transactions in QuickBooks, you have to put the natural expense account. That's what they call category in the online edition. If you click on that and you'll see there's expense accounts here so that you can pick. And then if you go over to the right side, I uh, said, so go ahead and just pick something on the left side. Just pick like advertising, I guess. Sure, we'll do red. Red. How about That's red? fine. Then go over to the right side. And then over here, you get to pick whether it's program, admin, and fundraising. Okay. So, and that same thing is true when it comes to income transactions. All right. So the other thing that I need to explain to you before we get into the mapping is that, well, let me just stop for a second and say something. Every single transaction that's coming in from Neon or whatever your CRM needs to be pointed to an account and it needs to be pointed to a class. All right. That's the first thing I want you to understand. Now, the second thing I want you to understand is when you decide to sync transactions from a software like Neon, over to QuickBooks, what it's going to do is it's going to enter each transaction on a sales form in QuickBooks. And the main sales form people use is sales receipts. So I want you to go ahead and X out of here. So just take a couple more minutes, top right, sure. and, uh, and go to the plus sign up at the top left and click new and click sales receipt, which is there. Yes. Now, if you'll notice, you get to put all the way on the right, go to the right, you need to forget that. Yeah, you go and you put the name of the class there and click it. And if, if, the, if the donation or the grant, if it's for a particular program, you'd put that program's class. If it's an unrestricted donation, put it to the fundraising class, all right? So you can just click fundraising there. Now, the other thing that I said you had to point every transaction to is an account. Now, if you notice, over here on the left, that column is an account. What that column is, is product service. And without spending a lot of time on it, product services 
mean your income accounts. But if you click on the drop down list, you're not going to see your income accounts. You're going to see another list in QuickBooks called the product service list. In the, in the desktop version, it's called the item list. And each product service points to an income account. So before you ever get ready to sync, Step one, you got to set up your classes. Step two, you have to set up your income accounts. And step three, you have to set up your product services, one item or one product service for each income account. So let's say you got a, uh, uh, let's see, an H and uh, an, an H and L sponsorship, H and H sponsorship. When for you that, click for our that, Hope, for Hope event, it's a corporate yes. sponsorship for our peer to peer yeah. event. So what this means is when QuickBooks looks at that, they need an account and they say, what the heck is a product service? Well, in QuickBooks, you assign product services to income accounts. So I'm going to click the little click the X to get out of here again at the top right. And uh, and then I want you to go to the top right again, the gear. And this time I'm going to click on the product service list. And if you go down to that H and H. Uh, oh, there yes. it is, and Go edit, ahead and edit it. it so we can see. Yeah, and scroll down. You'll see that it's pointed to the income account that I've created in QuickBooks. So before you ever get the sync done, you have to one, set up your classes for program admin and fundraising. Two, decide what you want your income accounts to be, and three, create a product service for each one of those income accounts. Just one is fine. And the reason why is because if you don't have product services created, then then Neon will not be able to sync with QuickBooks because it's going to throw everything into a sales receipt. If you don't have product services, it's not going to be able to do it. It's not going to work. And that's what happens if you've been using QuickBooks, but you haven't been using the sales receipt form, then that's why you freak out and you can't get this to work. Now, I'll explain to you how this sales receipt ultimately ends up being deposited into your bank account in a second. But now that I'm just going to say it one more time, and you can go back to Neon while I'm talking. One, you must set up your classes. That's going to be for your programs. Two, you have to set up your income accounts, whatever your board wants to see. And three, you need to set up a product service, a separate one that points to each income account. After you do that, Neon will take all of those product services and it'll take all those classes out of your QuickBooks file and it'll make them available to you in Neon. And mm -hmm. so now we'll go back to Neon and then what you'll need to do in Neon is decide what the mapping is like. So you can go to this mapping screen now. Actually, what I want to do, Greg, is is even before we get to that, I want to talk okay. about how to structure the neon side before okay. we even get to the mapping, right? Because I think okay. the mapping is like the final step. I think that's the problem that people get frustrated with is that they they haven't fully like thought of the journey and then they just dive into mapping things as they have it, right? Right. And you need to design the flow specific to your donor management systems kinks and nuances and things like that and and whatever accounting system that you use you can't just like go well this is how it's always been done so i need it to work this way you need to understand where you are and even somebody had brought up well what about quickbooks desktop versus online the the reality is is that like into it the makers of quickbooks they're only putting effort into quickbooks online primarily now and so there's a lot of limitations to quickbooks desktop that we as neon like tried to get around but quickbooks online doesn't have a lot of those so, but i but having said that what the yes. rules i just told you they Still are exactly the same in desktop mm -hmm. and neon is one of the very few crms that also syncs with quickbooks desktop but yes we'll go for it yeah there's a few limitations when it comes to the desktop side but we actually can sync with it most don't so let's talk about the two structural things first we talked about campaigns and funds so let's look at how those actually look like in real life so i like looking at the hierarchy view in neon when it comes to this because you have things like annual fund giving tuesday different appeals, right? Look at how many different campaigns that we have going on. But then notice that there are things 
because somebody asked about grants and stuff like that. Notice that there's elements that are like, okay, comfortably broken out that look exactly the same. Foundation contributions and grants, corporate contributions, government grants. A lot of that type of stuff can be very kind of comfortably matching what you've put in your finance system. But once you start getting into the sub appeals and things of that nature, we're going to walk through the strategy to get that. So when it comes to campaigns, feel free to make as many of these. And then there's elements that you can either match it or just say, you know what? I think we're fine as long as it defaults to this primary thing. And we'll get into what that looks like. Then what I'm actually going to do is I'm not going to fully add a new campaign, but what we've done is let's say I wanted to create a new appeal, right? So it's going to be like the super awesome appeal, right? So what you can do is notice that it's auto defaulting to this fund that's a setting a neon, but I can reassign it. Notice that the fund matches the classes to the T. That is another best practice is that your fund should just mirror exactly what you have on the class side. So, so that's, we've made a decision, um, I've made a decision with Tim that we think the, fu the uh, fund field is the best thing to match to the class field in QuickBooks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. And somebody's even asking about multiple income streams from one event, like a swim meet. You know, they got the sales, they got the relay fees, things like that. We're going to talk about that uh, from a peer to peer standpoint very shortly. So campaign actually helps that. But then ultimately, the, there's ways that you can map the fund to help break off that, too. So um, I think those are the primary things that I wanted to show when it comes to structure in Neon Greg. I think we can dive into the mapping itself. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say one thing about to that last gentleman's question. Um, yes. yes, you have different income streams that come from the same event. Each one of those uh uh I guess the point I'm trying to make is that we you can set each one of those up as sub as campaigns with subs. Mm -hmm. The point is, is that the campaign, that's the thing that we're suggesting that you map to the product service list. So because that could be the different stuff in many right, ways. That, right. You know. the, the goal is you I know a lot of the fund development people, they want to get very granular in terms of the revenue streams. We on the finance side. We don't want to see 10 million income accounts. We only want to see like total ticket sales for the event. We don't need to know how much ticket sales were for retired versus same day versus advanced versus I don't need all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one income account in QuickBooks that's ticket sales. I'm going to create one product service in QuickBooks that points to that ticket sales. And then I may have 15 campaign items that all point to that same product service when we map it. So neons where you go and have a party and get granular. So this is what we have. Again, this is just us displaying a few examples of best practices. But again, you can set a hierarchy if there's a conflict. But ultimately, we're saying you can generally not worry too much about tender and purpose when it comes to a mapping standpoint. Now, if there's something that's missing, you can set a default during the entry that basically says if there is somebody didn't enter a campaign or a fund, for instance, then default to these. That is that these these options here. And so something like individual contributions, fundraising as a class, and then undeposited funds as a QuickBooks deposit to account are good defaults. They're good defaults there. But when you start to get granular, you can start to subdivide by campaign, for instance, and notice that you know camp, capital campaign is still an individual contribution, but we have a different class for that. So it's it's going to override and say, no, it's not fundraising. It should go to this class. But then conference sponsorships, eh, you know what? It's perfectly fine to go to the fundraising one here for corporate contributions or foundations. But the actual service item is different. And so you can map it down to the individual campaign in a lot of different ways. And even for the Hoop, Hoop for Hope 5K, this is through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising revenue. This is coming through teams and things of that nature. Then donations through groups will get you there. But ultimately, it's still 
fundraising revenue. And then when you go to fund. Wait, before you go to funds, I just want to say yep. one thing. Let's go back yes. up a little bit. I just want yes. to try and frame this for everybody to the top there. Okay, so subdivide by campaign. So what you're seeing listed here is um, look at how there's it's the granularity of the incomes. Look at how we have fall appeal, spring appeal, summer, winter. We don't need those four income accounts in QuickBooks, but we want them broken out here. So what we've done is we've created one income account for individual contributions in um, QuickBooks. We've created a product service in QuickBooks that points to it. And then if I could get you um, to uh, Tim to go ahead and point each one of these, go under fall appeal. Yeah. Um, and uh, point it to whatever the one was for individual contributions, second from the bottom. Okay. Do the same thing for spring appeal, second from the bottom. Do the same thing for summer and do the same thing for winter. So what we're doing is when you map, all the campaigns map to the product service item only. Okay. Leave the class and the undeposited funds blank. The, the campaigns get mapped to the product service, okay? Mm -hmm. So now when you go down to the funds, so go down to the funds, these, you see how we left the, the uh, product service blank? These were syncing with the class list in QuickBooks. And so that's the class list, that second list, and that's what we're mapping uh, in QuickBooks. So what, that's the way that your mapping should look. You should yes. have not you should not have all the columns filled out the reason why they do this is because they are giving you flexibility to do anything you want to and we're suggesting that you map the campaigns to product service and you map the funds to class that's what and we're even, suggesting and even the reality here is that greg if i leave this blank it defaults to this right Right. So I don't even need to go through. And if, if if it's going to be the default, you don't have to fill out the default there. It's only if there's a divergence that you have to fill it out. And then the fallback here is for your classification. So only if for, so even for capital campaign here, if the fund field is populated, I'm covered. I don't even need to technically put that here because right. capital campaign is covered here. And that's it. That's how it works. It seems complicated. But that's because there's a lot of flexibility that we provide you. So this is why we did this webinar to walk through this. So let's um, show them a transaction and then yes. show it to them over in QuickBooks so we can finish it. Yeah, up. let's do it live. So I'm actually going to okay. add a GIF. So, so I'm going to add an actual transaction um, on the fly here. So let's do my good friend Abraham Van Helsing. He's going to do $500. And um, you know what? Greg, I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do a grant. Okay. I'm going to do a grant instead because somebody asked about grants. So let's do a grant. Let's do I'm my, okay with that. yeah, let's do Spartacus Foundation. We're going to do for $50,000. Where okay. do you come up with these names? <laughs> hey man. So Spartacus <laughs> Foundation. And Spartacus. Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to do foundation contributions and grants. And then this one goes to, to fundraising, it defaults. That one defaults to the fundraising class, notice. But notice like, how you could change it if you wanted to. If I needed to override it, let's say it's actually yeah. gonna be classified. Let's do it yeah. for education. Let's override yeah. it and, and earmark so, it for education. So, so let me just stop you one second. What has just happened here is the person entering something in Neon, and this could have come from a page also, a web page, but they have already pointed it to the income account, that's the campaign, and they've mm -hmm. pointed it to the class, that's the fund. So now QuickBooks has what it needs, so it knows what to do when you sync it. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually like just kind of enter the gift and you know maybe put check number is four, five, six, something like that. And I can even run things in the administrative back end. So then Neon has a syncing interface. This is the final step. The final step is a special dashboard widget, which the finance, the entry person, whoever, and you can even put permission controls that like nobody else can see this. So you, you like the intern or whoever can't touch this, right? So what we can do is let's actually go and look at transactions that have not been synced for today, because I actually did do some syncing today. So, oh, we got a lot actually. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and sync all of them. Here's our Spartacus one that we just did. So let's go ahead and synchronize. And while that's getting kind of synced over and and kind of the system's running through and it's looking at everything and it's getting ready to actually pop everything over, I'm gonna check our questions to just see how we're doing. Um, okay, and actually, I can I know people are actually doing data entry like as we're doing it live. Um, so okay, it's syncing over. So let's actually pop on over here. And what I'm going to do is kind of refresh our 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 stuff. So why don't you go to that name now in QuickBooks? Go to Sales uh, and go to customer the customer list the top. Yep, and see if you see that grant in here now. There it is. So there it is. Uh, I'll click on it and there it is. Right. <laughs> and go ahead, go ahead and double click on it so that you can show them this. This has been uh, this has been synced. This came from QuickBooks. So now what and now I'll take over for just to finish this out. So okay, you're going to finish up. It's now yeah. this is your show. So OK, so so what's happened is. And so somebody has dumped this transaction into your QuickBooks file. So this is what freaks accounting people off because they're like, don't be messing with my bank account. It's not going to mess with your bank account. If you look at the deposit to go to deposit to, you see how it says undeposited funds. What this is, this is basically a holding tank for all the money being sitting there waiting to be deposited. You see, Neon's not stupid, and neither is QuickBooks. They know that you're going to batch deposit things, certainly if they're credit cards, but even checks, you wait till the end of the week. If we were to point it to the actual bank account that it's going into, and if you click the drop down list, you can point it to a bank account. But that's not what you do. You wait till the end of the week, you deposit them in lump form. So instead, we pick undeposited funds, which is a default choice in Neon, by the way. I didn't point it out, but it is. So now that's sitting there waiting to be deposited. So you can go ahead and X out of here now, the top right. And then all you're going to do, the accounting people, when it comes time, you look, you're like, okay, a deposit's occurred. You may have downloaded it from a bank feed, or you may enter it manually either way, but you can match the deposit to all of those downloaded transactions that came in from Neon. Go ahead and push new. Push uh, bank deposit, and then everything that came in from uh, from Neon is going to be sitting here waiting to be deposited. Okay, so do you see your Van Helsing or whatever that was? There, there it is. is. Yeah. Okay. So what you would do then? Now these are all checks. So theoretically, you would simply check off the ones that are that have been deposited. So let's say it's that one and you can just pick a couple of others, Tim. Okay. And then if you scroll up, yeah. scroll up to the top. Um, yeah. Now at the very top left, you see that click that under checking and click there. That's the bank account it's depositing to. So see, now it's going to deposit one transaction, not three or two, because that's how it's going to show on the bank statement. It makes mm -hmm. doing the bank rec a lot easier later. So you can go ahead and just click save and now your bank account goes up. And that's really the whole kit and caboodle. That's how that works. That's the process from beginning to end. Yeah, and and look, it can get very complicated. We understand that. Somebody actually asked, where do you actually find the syncing side in Neon? Uh, it's, it's its own special dashboard widget, by the way. You're gonna add widget, and you just search for uh, sync, and that QuickBooks sync is there. So that's that's the easy thing that creates its own widget. So, um, you know, it's a lot to take in. We tried to, to to provide some best practices, but you know, Greg is here, our team is here to kind of walk through this type of stuff. So on that, actually, we do want to give a gift for you for being part of today's presentation. The folks at QuickBooks Made Easy are providing some uh, discounts on their um, training. And this is right. especially for you folks. So Greg, tell us a little bit about what we have here. Okay. Sure. So if you look at the top, well, basically, let me just say this. We have two training uh, um, trainings that are on demand streamable. Together, they're about 15, 16 hours. They go through every single thing you'd ever want to know about QuickBooks soup to nuts. If you are a nonprofit, they're specifically for nonprofits. Um, you can get 
individually. Uh, they're normally 229. That's the first one. You can get it for 149 um, by using this code at checkout. 149 MAR, that's March. If you want to get both of them, it's 298. That's the middle one. It's called the bundle. It normally costs 399. We're selling it to you for 298. And the code for that is 298 MAR. If you would prefer, you're like, I learned that way, but I'd rather just have somebody I can call when I have questions. We at QuickBooks Made Easy have technical support. When you call, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're going to get either me or you're going to get Paige or uh, you're going to get um, Barbara uh, or you're going to get Jenny. So it's the same four. Uh, we do do nights and weekends. We can dial into your software for a whole year, normally $4.99. We're giving it to you for $2.99. Um, so I want to make sure that you have these codes. So I'm assuming you're going to be giving it out to them. And then if you could just go to my little website, quickbooksmadeeasy.com, uh, so that they can see the website. You want me to actually go to the website? Okay. Yeah, just go to the website. And, the, and while you're doing that, what I would say is before you start syncing, make sure that you understand that you've got your QuickBooks set up correctly. Otherwise, you're going to create a problem. And we are here for you uh, to help you with that process. All right? Absolutely. And I Absolutely. think that's all I've got. Yeah, and let me see if there's – I know we're a little bit over time, folks. So, mm -hmm. um, Oh, that know. sale, that sale, those codes, they're yes. available till Saturday night because there the prices go. are so cheap. So it's Saturday night at midnight Pacific Standard Time. And and I guess you're sending out this deck so they'll have the codes again, right? Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. Right. And, and, and the deck is downloadable. Um, so uh, I know, uh, Greg, it looks like um, somebody on the, on the call is looking for help with mapping, for instance. Uh, I'm not sure if they're using Neon or not, but uh, I know Neon does it best. So um, that might help. Well, we can but. certainly help with the mapping. Now, when you get into the details of how Neon maps to QuickBooks, we'll need to talk. If it's a quick thing, we can do it with the tech support. If it's something really huge, we also do like a one-on-one -on -one consulting thing to kind of help you with that. Mm -hmm. We just have to see how it goes. And Greg is our preferred partner for that type of stuff. So maybe if we, we, we're a little bit over, but um, you know, if you folks want to ask maybe one other primary question, um, uh, and somebody asked about like inventory store sales. Neon does have a store that you can map things over to as well. You're uh, fading again. You're fading again. Okay. How about now? Like, so somebody asked yeah. about inventory. Neon does have mapping capabilities for our store over to QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop, for instance. So we do we do have that capability. Um, and then somebody asked for the QuickBooks trainings. Um, uh, can we view them multiple times or just once? Once you, you can watch them forever. So you can watch them over and over again. They're meant to become the Bible of your organization so that when you leave and another person takes your place, they have access to them as well. Somebody asked uh, me, does Neon do location tracking? Um, if you can give you a bit of a, like, a little bit more color on that, because, uh, again, this might be a, is that a development question or a? In the, in the, <laughs> or a I will say question. this in QuickBooks Online, there's a location field. Yeah. Um, I don't think QuickBooks, I don't think Neon maps to that yet. I don't know if that's what they're talking about. It's uh, tracking for unrestricted versus restricted giving, which I actually yeah. would say, I would argue is the purpose field. Well, yes, but or, this is a person who maps it. Well, I'm telling you, this person has gotten some training from from probably Megan, um, who she recommends uh, using the location field to track restricted versus unrestricted. Uh, and I don't think that I don't think that maps over yet. That's no. your answer. Yeah. Okay. Not not at the moment for that type of tracking. Is Neon cheaper than Donor Perfect? I think it's a better value. Uh, 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 let me tell you something. I teach probably three thousand. Uh, people a year with my webinars and seminars and nonprofits, and I've run across very few people that like Donor Perfect, very few people that use it. Um, I mean, this is horrible to say, but I don't, I do not recommend that software. I also do not recommend GiftWorks. I wouldn't do either of those. Um, uh, Neon is a good one, and I won't say any others because we're on, <laughs> because we're on a Neon you, call. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> and, 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 and in all honesty, our, our approach is, is, you know, 
just please don't use QuickBooks for your donor management software and we can figure the rest out. That's yeah. ultimately that, that what I'm going to say in terms of that, because because, uh, you know, we, we love the folks that are, are doing the work at the fundraising effectiveness project, which includes donor perfect. So when it comes to apples to apples, we can be in touch, folks. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, I think we had a great presentation today, Greg. This was a long time coming for this type of one, and I can't wait to get this up and and just kind of deepen things. We're going to also kind of start investing in more resources around this. I actually think a template for a, uh, a, a definitions discussion might be a good resource that we can collaborate on together. So, sure. Awesome. All right. Awesome. And, and uh, you know, when it comes to individual questions and things like that, we had one final question relates to pricing. We're going to be in touch. I want to make sure that we give personalized engagement. So um, we're going to definitely be in touch. want to thank all of you for attending today's uh, presentation. Greg, always a pleasure. And uh, I'll talk to you all soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.